about two hours into the drive. I kind of like mediocre slept. I didn't really sleep super great. I'm pulling up to our first toll in Illinois. So we're like midway through the trip. So I asked you guys yesterday on Instagram to put in some questions for Sam and I about nursing. And you guys literally blew up my phone. Like blew up my phone. There's so many different questions, which is awesome. Super exciting that you guys are like really, really curious. A lot of these are like kind of targeted at Sam with his like specialty and then me with my specialty, just like kind of comparing where we're at. And that's like obvious that there's a difference, but yeah, I'm just gonna kind of pull out some of the questions that were most commonly asked and we'll get into it. All right, so the most common question that I'm getting, like just reading through, like there's like thousands of questions in here, but the most common one you guys are asking is, how much, I'll just read this, how much tension does it put on your relationship by being complete opposite schedules? And I think I've mentioned it before that we really do have like opposite schedules at times, but it's not all the time. Like he likes to work days, I like to work nights, but we do work both. Like I will be working days next week and, do you work days next week? work opposites but in terms of like it being difficult it definitely can be difficult it's not always easy like this week for example I worked three night shifts and he worked two day shifts I didn't see him from Monday when he went to work in the morning until Wednesday when I just got home was it today, Thursday? <laughs> yesterday when I saw him so you just kind of have to work with it I mean we kind of knew what we were getting ourselves into when we started dating back in nursing school two years ago so that's kind of my outlook on it. I don't really, it's not always easy, but a lot of things in life aren't easy. And if it's, if it's the way it is, it's the way it is. I, we text each other, we leave notes, like just little things that kind of make things better. That would be what I would say to answer that question. Sam does not see it as adding tension. Depends on what your definition of tension is. It's just, uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But. I mean, it just kind of depends on what's going on too. Like we, we do work in the same hospital. So that's another question in here. We do work in the same hospital. We work on the same floor, but we do not work on the same units. We are completely different units and we work at a really big hospital. So we don't see each other like super often there. But like if I wanted to go and see him after my shift and he's working a day shift, I could go walk on his unit and see him. But again, like he's saying, like tension, like it doesn't really, it doesn't really put tension on us. It kind of, is just like, if you guys have ever heard like absent, absence, absence makes the heart grow fonder. We definitely like look forward to like seeing each other the next time. So give some, take some. It's not like that all the time. You just kind of have to go with it. People asking what type of unit Sam works on, how he gets asked, like how he gets approached as a male nurse. Science unit, so we like a lot of neurosurgery stuff. So you're removing brain tumors or you're fusing like vertebrae together. We also get stroke patients, neurology, that type of stuff. Um, a lot of stroke patients, so it's about like half stroke, half surgery, and then occasionally you'll get like a trauma patient who's been there for a while that was in, like a bad car accident or whatever. Do you get like a different reaction being a male? No, people are really chill about it. The only really act reaction that you'll ever get is like older people will ask, oh, are you going to become, go on to become a doctor? And I'm just like, nope, I'm a nurse. So. Which that's super interesting. Like I feel like it depends like on the population you're working in, but like his unit's super, his unit is definitely like a more intense unit. It's, it's, it's an ICU step down. So like we have a surgical neuro ICU and that's where like he's saying like his surgical patients, like he will get admits or like transfers from the SNCU down to his unit. So he has like decently critical patients. Um, his patient ratios are technically like three to one, but he can get four. My patient ratios are four to one up to five to one. So my patients are super, super sick. I work on a medical floor. So like, it's like med surge, but it's like amped up like a lot. <laughs> like our patients were at a big hospital and if anybody has a real problem, 
they're gonna be there and it's if they have multiple comorbidities like hypertension um, diabetes uh, CKD CAD heart failure CHF like anything like that on top of a problem they're coming to us with we're going to get them because we have to deal with what they're dealing with at the moment so whatever their acute problem is if it's their CHF well we have to take them because they also might have diabetes and you know, they had cancer or whatever, like we have to take them. So both pretty critical floors. Um, we are super, super busy, both of us. Like we always come home and talk about our stories, which that's one of the questions on here. Do you guys talk, do you share your battle stories? Which made me laugh because yeah, we do. We honestly get home and like, obviously we're HIPAA wise, like we don't talk about patients' names or anything, but as nurses, like, yes, we definitely share our stories. Yes, it's definitely kind of a blessing because that's, I'm just answering like 12 questions in one. It's definitely a blessing to be able to come home and like vent about that. And I'm pretty sure that Sam would agree that it's like, when you go through like a really, really long, hard day at work, and like things go wrong or things go right, it's so awesome to come home and talk to somebody about it who wasn't there with you, but like understands what you're talking about. So I would say it's a good thing. Um, sometimes we like encountered situations where we like didn't agree on something or like we challenge each other with questions and I'd say that that's also like a good thing because you see things from another person's perspective that maybe you didn't think about it in that way. I'm talking with my hands a lot, sorry. At least five questions that I've now read. This one. Y'all ever do it in the sleeping quarters like they all do on Grays? Another question was, is it true that people do it in hospitals? Never in my absolute wildest dreams would I ever do that at the hospital ever. Like <laughs> I have no idea if people do it. I don't have the time of day for that. I don't I mean like I guess you could go find a spot, but that just, it grosses me out a lot, like just like the hospital in general because of the stuff that like we both deal with. Like we're both like pretty dirty floors. So no, to answer your question, we, no, no. But, but I'm sure it happens, I, it probably does. All right, so Sam is driving and we're driving in Chicago traffic. So, well soon, we're not really in Chicago traffic yet, but I'm answering most of the questions. Um, one of the questions is, I said you guys could ask relationship questions and we're, we're gonna try and get to as many as we can today and tomorrow on our drive back. But one of them was, what advice do you have for somebody moving in together for the first time? We're each gonna say a piece, I have no idea what he's gonna say, but my piece of advice that I would say, if you're moving in with your significant other, um, my biggest piece of advice is to keep an open mind. Because you're going to share your life with somebody and you're not going to agree on everything and that's probably the biggest factor that you learn like probably your first two to three months in is that you're going to like you're gonna find things about your partner that you did not know before and some things might bother you and like people will like do this when they're like still in like their first year like we moved in together what not even we hadn't even been dating a full year yet um, I think we were like at nine months or something like that but I mean, we were still like, like that cool like honeymoon phase, but then like when you move in with each other, you're like, holy shit, this is annoying, that's annoying, but this is cute, this is great. Like you find different things you love and things that you probably won't do because you're sharing your space with somebody else. So my advice is to keep an open mind. Like just be aware that things are probably going to change. Like you're gonna have to give on some things and some things, you know, they're gonna have to give on. So that would be what I would say. What would you say? Uh, allow each other to have space. Either like find a room to do your own thing and claim a room. That's your room. That's what we do. We should have a, like a room that we go to to do our own things. But just allow the other person to have their space because I know I like to have my alone time to just chill and do whatever the heck I want to do on my phone. Weird stuff that Hollywood would find interesting and whatnot. And just relax. And I uh, for sure. Everybody needs that alone time to just chill. And so give each other the space to do it. It's pretty easy to read when someone wants to just be a, be by themselves for a minute. So just allow it to happen. Yeah, I mean that was like a thing like when we moved when we were in our apartment together, our first apartment, it was a two bedroom and like it was kinda difficult to get space from each other. Like we're both very much like that, like he may sound like he like we like be like we like space a lot, but like we both are. We're both like very independent, um, need space, and I think that's why our relationship works so well is because we're both like dynamically about that. Like 
we're each individuals, but we come together and make one, and it's like a super strong relationship because of that. And I feel like that's like very truthful. So if you have another room, if you have a basement, like our house, we have four bedrooms and three levels. So like he can go downstairs and play video games, or he can be upstairs in the bedroom and I can be on the main unit. Like if we, just if we need that space, because he's right, I like, for example, I, I can't, this is a question, what, what's one pet peeve? I can't stand when he watches like super loud YouTube videos like consistently and um, like so like that would be an example as to like how you would give each other space. Just be aware that it's a normal thing. Like it's not like your partner hates you. It's because in order to make a relationship work long term, like you need to have your space in your own time and your own things and be independent. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Do you have a pet peeve about me? I'm sure they would love to hear you say one. No, he loves me. There's no pet peeves. Who handles the aftermath of night shifts worse? I say him, he says me. Why do you think that? Yeah, I mean, I sleep all day. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't have to sleep all day. You're like dead and can't do anything and I'm like, let's do something. After my third night, this is this is after my third night, so what time is it, 1.50? I got maybe two hours of sleep today, maybe three, maybe, and I'm okay. It's gonna suck later, but like, I'm very, I don't need tons of sleep. Sam definitely does, like, need sleep. If he works day shift a lot of times, he won't get like a lot because he does, we like to stay up late. Um, we always kind of have like with nursing school and everything, so he may maybe nights get like six, but like Sam likes sleep, so like when he's done with night shift on his third night, he would definitely be sleeping till like 3.34, so probably him. And then he always says he's tired, so. Sam. Okay, so I know that I like kind of answered this before about like how we balance, like make our relationship work with being nurses, and I'm just gonna kind of like elaborate on it because I'm thinking of different things as I'm like, as we're driving along. So I think we spend a lot of time together like on our days off that we can. Um, we do, I will say we do self-schedule ourselves. So like we make our own schedule. So we use the app Nurse Grid, and I think I've talked about this before to you guys, but this is super helpful if your significant other is a nurse as well. So just so you guys can see, yeah, okay. So this is what the app looks like. I can see, just to show you guys something blank, um, I can see his schedule and then there's like a little button that says shift comparison and you can put, it shows you where you're working and where they're working and like we do that to like make our schedule so we can kind of like be similar. I don't recommend making your schedule exactly like your partner's because then you never would have a day off without them and like Sam said, like we like our space so like we try and like make it kind of similar. Like if he's, if we're working nights on a weekend, like we try and work the same weekend so that we can have a weekend off together and it's not always possible and I don't always want to work all the weekends because he definitely works like, he, he might work like one weekend and then like a week later, like two weeks later work another one versus like, I like to knock my weekends out. I like to do like month, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night and then a Sunday night. Like that's how I like to do my four weekend days in six weeks. So it just kind of depends, but we definitely try to make it so that they're similar schedules, but not always perfect. Um, we try and probably go like, make some sort of like date night probably once a week. Sometimes it's more than that, sometimes it doesn't happen, but I feel like, like right now, we're going to a Khalid concert in Chicago. Like that's kind of gonna be like our two day thing of this week and then he works Saturday and I don't work this weekend. So like making time for each other is key. Like you're not, it's not gonna be perfect. You're not always gonna have time for each other and I remember in the beginning of our relationship, oh my God, not the beginning of our relationship, when we first started our nursing jobs it was extremely difficult. Not because we didn't really like want to do it it's because we just like didn't have we were exhausted all the time and we still are now but like we kind of got a grip on like what's going on and like what we need to do and when we need to sleep and what we need to accomplish so I would say it gets better and if you're going into your first job with your significant other and you're struggling please know that it does get better just give it time and work with it because it's 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 life like you're transitioning you're going into a new job I mean I still struggle Sam struggles sometimes like you have to find the work-life balance and it's okay like it's, it's not, you're not expected to like 
have it all together right away. So keep that in mind if you are. Some of you are telling me you're struggling with relationships while you're being a nurse. Like, yes, we work extremely tough jobs. And another thing I'd like to point out about nursing in the 312s, a lot of people have said to me before, like, oh, you only work, I'm full time. So, so is he, right now I'm full time. Um, if you work three shell, three twelves a week, like, oh, that must be easy, like, you have four days off. Well, technically, when you work three twelves, and depending upon what days they are, if they're days or nights, if you're working night shift, you technically have to, like, accomplish, like, two other days on top of that, because the day you're going in is, you're basically, like, prepping for that, you're not really doing a whole lot, and then the day after, you're basically sleeping all day, and then the next day, you're, like, recovering, so I just want to point that out. <laughs> to anybody who thinks that nurses have it really easy like it's really really tough working 12s um, but we do both work 12 hour shifts um, occasionally we'll work an 8 but that's very rare like if I have to I it's because I need to pick up or something like that but yeah how do you master blood draws hey, that's a great question because I sure as heck haven't mastered it yet Shit's hard, you guys. It's not. Stay to the right neither of us are freaking great at it. I'm pretty damn good at blood draws. I can get almost anybody's vein with a blood draw. I shouldn't say that because it's not everybody. If it's super, super difficult, it takes me probably two tries. But like, I'm way better at blood draws than IVs. IVs, I have a lot of work to go. I work with some awesome nurses. Like, I have some really awesome people on my unit that like kick ass at IVs. Like. One of my managers can literally get like an IV on like a carrot. So like I have a lot of awesome like mentorship on my unit. So I feel like that's helped me a lot with like being able to do IVs and like um, blood draws. <laughs> but like Sam said, like it takes time. My biggest tips for IVs is um, stay as close to the skin as you possibly can. Like literally stay completely parallel. You're obviously gonna have to go in a little bit when you go for the for the, for the vein. But like stay as close to the skin as you can. Um, so instead of going lanes. instead of going left and right when you're digging at the person's vein like a dick don't do that as much as you can I know that sometimes we want to dig for the vein because we've already poked but that's super painful for the patient oh I hate traffic super painful for the patient so try not to do that pull back if you can and see if you have any blood at all because sometimes it's like right there or push a little bit forward pull up on it a little bit, see if you're in the vein, that's kind of like digging, but it's not It's not terrible, like don't go like this, but like pull up a little bit. Heat packs help bring the vein up, alcohol wipes help bring the vein up, um, kind of tapping on it can help. You'll get good at it. Like I still, I'm with five months in and, well almost six months. Almost six months in August, it's freaking crazy, can you believe that? Six months. Um, takes time. I, I want to be really, really good at IVs, and I think it's going to take years. So those are a couple of my tips, though. Just keep practicing. More practice, practice, practice. Sam, this one's for Sam. How many questions did your NCLEX exam have? 75. Because he's a badass. He got the 75. I got the 265. Uh, Sam, was your unit your first choice? I didn't really have a choice, I was just getting my foot in the door, but I'm really glad that I ended up on the internet day because I love neuro. It's, it's awesome. It makes me really happy that he says that because if you guys have been following us for a long time, um, you know that obviously as we're going to Chicago right now, we were going to be moving to Chicago. Um, we were getting ready to go look at places and obviously some stuff happened and life happened and we ended up staying in Iowa, which worked out really great because we both ended up on really great units. I picked a unit that I had experience with and he picked Neuro because he had a great opportunity with Neuro and it's been such an awesome learning experience for us both. So that's kind of how we ended up where we are and it's been good. We're learning a lot. When dating your classmate, how awkward when trying to get a better grade out of class? <laughs> um, I think it was ever awkward for us. Do you think it was ever awkward in school? I mean, yeah, there were times when Sam would get like an A and I got like a like a C or a C minus or some shit or vice versa. But it was really I wanna try those Corona Refrescos. They're 90 calories. Um there were a few times that, that happened, but like we love each other a lot and we studied our asses off together. We literally studied from I had a year in nursing school and he had a year in nursing so we both like were in like the prime of nursing school we, we spent three semesters out of five together so 
I don't know, we were always encouraging each other, like, sometimes it was, like, annoying, like, I think we had a couple tiffs about a couple tests, like, where he's, he's one of those people that walks out of an exam and says, well, it wasn't that bad, and I'm, like, crying, because it sucked, like, I remember that, but... It wasn't that bad, guys. It really wasn't that bad. Like, don't make it about being competitive. Make it as they're your classmate, but like, separate it from your relationship if it's possible. I know that that's hard, especially if you live with them like we did, but like, it's not that big of a deal.